and away we go. Let's see. I was talking about that San Luis Valley things there. Uh, I don't know if you guys believe in this stuff or not, and I'm not sure if I do or not, but the valley's supposed to be high in UFO activity and and weird stuff like cattle mutilation and stuff, but I don't know. Looking at the where it is on a map, it's kind of a direct flight path in between what they call Area 51 and then the uh, Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, so, so who knows. Might be some kind of test aircraft. But it being so far away from any kind of big city that I'm sure light pollution is not there because I don't remember seeing it at all. It's a clear dark sky. But it is in an area that gets really cold during the winter, and I don't think it has a huge amount of snow because the precipitation amounts for the year aren't very much, but, and it being a desert. So. And the older I get, the less I like being in the cold. It might be fun to live there a few months of the year. Or more. Funny that this bike's still working after all these years. The battery still holds a full charge from like new. I'm not sure what kind of batteries they had back then. <laughs> It's a hawk. Red tailed, probably. Oops, on top of the light. Oh, or power pole. What's up, buddy? I thought I saw white on its tail and white on its head, but I was wrong. people on the trail today with it being chilly. That mid afternoon. Juliet, I can't decide if I'm gonna do a full maintenance cycle on it or not. It's still about 
I don't know, 60, 70 miles away from when I should do the maintenance on the hub motor. Take it apart and clean out the grease and put new grease in. Double check that no grit's been in there. I was just going to go ahead and bend the crank arm back, but I started reading some posts on Reddit about bending the crank arm, and it's been a handful of people that it snapped and caused some pretty serious injuries too once it was actually back on the bike. So I'll try to avoid that. And crank arms are, aren't very expensive. I think the one I ordered was $14, so. That's not bad. I think it was 1432 or something like that shipped to the house from Amazon. You did have to buy a $10 tool to get the crank arm off, so. It's funny how there's so many specialty tools for bicycles, motorcycles. Of course, I guess cars do too, for the most part. When you start getting into bearings and newer stuff like fuel injection. But yeah, it should be, I can be back on the road tomorrow. The uh, crank arms that are on it, for some reason on Neohora's website, it shows that they're uh, 165 millimeters in the length that's in between the center of the, uh, no, I'm not sure what it's called, it's the pivot point in between the two pedals and then to the middle of the uh, spinning part on the pedal but when I pulled them off they're actually 170 millimeters so the length of the crank arms they uh, they kind of distribute your power differently depending on the length so and most bikes and most people they don't ever change them they're just a generic length and I'm not that particular either I'm not going to be racing and trying to eke out all the power that's necessary through my leg But when I do that service, I'll also chain off the, or clean off the chain. It's pretty greasy and gritty right now. Should probably do it before I ride it again, but it'll be okay. And then when I had the crank arm off, I took off the, uh, well, it's still off, but I took off the, uh, plastic panel that's behind it. It's what covers up the uh, controller for the e-bike motor. That was interesting to see. Compared to the controller on this bike, there's a lot fewer connections coming off of it. Probably more wires given all the electronics associated with the headlight and turn signals and horn and everything else. But. but it looks pretty simple if you were have to change it or what have you. Somebody's doing laundry. Smell their dryer vent and fabric softener.
but really for a e-bike it's super there's not a whole lot to change I mean you've got your controller and then you've got your motor and the battery and then it's all connections in between so not really a huge amount of effort to figure out At least that's the e-bike side of it. I've never had to change a rear cassette or all the mechanisms back there. But I'm sure it's not too difficult. Hello. Yeah, I'm definitely going slower than on the Juliet. Usually we're around 13 miles an hour. I think I've got that set to do splits at every 5 miles, so that means we're at 10 miles for the day. It might be another 4 miles or 3 miles to get home. dog booty on the left trotting back and forth <laughs> okay. I'm coming up on your left okay. thank you <laughs> oh, puppers <laughs> I mean, for what it is, this bike doesn't do too bad for range. I mean, the other day, of course, I think I forgot to turn on the pass setting the other day. But I got all the way up to Sheridan and back. So that was 16 miles round trip. And the battery was still in the green. Right now, under power, it's a yellow. When I stopped to change my battery a minute ago on the camera, it was in green level, so. so we're doing okay. Yeah, like it just went to green again, coasting. So. Ugh. Yeah. That hall center, or whatever it is for the spin on the pedals. It does not like to pick up any sooner than that one and a half turns. I had it in way too well over gear, I guess. Yeah, the seat's starting to bother me. Like I said, it's fine when you're just sitting and riding, but when you're pedaling, it's not pleasant, so. for me, might be just fine for other people. Ten point seven miles. So we'll break close. Oh, it's 
like my grip's coming off. Huh. I'll fix that when I get home. Maybe. Oh, there we go. We got it. Just gotta smack it. That's professional mechanics technique. Sometimes you just gotta beat something. I had thought about changing the motor on this and putting in a different system, but the uh, real wheel, I mean, I guess it'd probably be okay for a hub motor, but the uh, how it's set up with another gear on the left side in addition to the cassette on the right, it's probably a half inch to an inch wider on the axle and wider on how that rear whatever A-frame has been out. I don't know if I could bend that in. I, I wouldn't want to do that though. Probably ruin part of the structural integrity of the bike and then also if I wanted to keep this original or put it back to original it'd be problematic. But this really isn't a bad little bicycle. It was built with good components and the designer obviously took care to design it right. So I'm not sure how many e-bikes out there from 14 years old still have their original battery at full capacity. And the motor's still working. But when I get back home, Bongo's going to be upset with me. He wasn't a huge fan when I was gone the other day. It's 191st, so we'll be close to getting home. Hopefully we'll beat some of the beginning rush hour traffic. So.
it's weird. It's, I know everybody says this, oh, it used to be cornfields and what have you, but it just seems like Westfield's grown so rapidly. I mean, this stuff, it used to be cornfield, and then even way further down, it was cornfields. So in the what, 15 years that I've had my house here, they have changed a lot. steps up to another curb. You guys probably see that. I didn't have to explain it. I notice in the videos it's weird because when you're watching them it seems like stuff is happening faster than it is when you're actually physically on the bicycle. And then, if, I mean, of course the field of view too. I mean, my peripheral vision is a lot wider than what a camera can do right now. Now I've got the seat on this thing set so high that I can, can't touch the, my toe to the ground lean it way over. I'm tired when I get home though. I'm not used to paddling as much. Of course, I've got a neuromuscular condition where I can't really do that that much anyway. Oh, we're going to go this way. That's where the Juliet's nice. It lets me do long distances and not be completely worn out. After finally figuring out how to do the cruise control, that'll help even more. here they finally made it limited access I'm not sure how far it goes past Kokomo but I believe I can't remember I was a truck driver and I used to deliver mail but I think in between I-465 which is the close to the northern boundary of Indianapolis on up to South Bend Indiana there was something like 21 or 24 stoplights. So when they closed up 31 to limited access, it's like, I think it reduced the time to South Bend a 
heating up by 45 minutes or thereabouts. Kind of crazy. they'll decide to put finish this sidewalk it's not like the high school hasn't been here for decades yeah, give us some throttle I'm a little worn out I'll have to look when I get home and check what the percentage of battery life is with a multimeter. Be curious to know. Because when I stopped, I mean like right now it's showing yellow, but I bet if it sits for a little bit it'll be green again. So there's the sidewalk again. Starting to hurt my nether regions. I thought about getting another battery for this, but it's really hard to find another battery for some reason. I don't know if I can find something that's a 48 volt and some kind of piece of electronics that'll cut down the voltage. Oh. Come on, Dan. Gotta make sure I don't get run over from the left. End up wrecking on the right. I really wish the seat posts were matching on the Juliet in this, but they're different diameters, so can't just switch them out. I don't foresee buying another Brook saddle because they've gone up considerably in price since I bought the one back in 2010. So. I I mean, it's a leather saddle, so you're talking, I think it's, they're around 140 now. Which, I mean, compared to racing mountain bike seats and stuff, that's a comparable cost. But, but when you're just talking about a uh, get-around bicycle seat, that's a little steep. This is the uh, other side of the park, but I don't usually go this way. 
but anyways this will be the end of the video if you guys would please like and subscribe I appreciate it um, in the description I have links for the uh, Juliet the Juliet 2 the EO, or the prom okay can't talk the Romeo the Romeo Pro if you're interested in purchasing those they uh, I believe they're still slightly discounted from what they are regular priced and uh, if you buy them through those links I make a little bit of money and hoping to buy another editing computer but anyways I appreciate you guys watching thank you have a good day